Hey YouTube, this is Alexander and Android 6.0 Marshmallow is currently rolling out to Nexus devices, although the Nexus 6 seems to be taking longer than any other supported device, so I just decided to flash the factory image and have a clean install about a week ago. So without further ado, this is Android 6.0 on the Nexus 6. So not much has changed here since the last beta I took a look at, but everything is now official. Here on the lock screen, we can see that the font is slightly changed and the phone shortcut has been replaced with the voice search shortcut. Also, another difference is that you now have to swipe from either corner to jump into the shortcuts, as opposed to just swiping from either side of the screen as an Android 5 Leto lollipop. This is much appreciated since now I'm not accidentally swiping into shortcuts I didn't mean to, since it requires a more intentional finger gesture, which I welcome. Probably the first notable thing on the home screen is the app drawer. Now I know this isn't Android 6.0 specific since this is available to other devices via a Google Now launcher update in the Play Store, but it is something all Nexus devices will have going forward. As I mentioned in my previous coverage of the beta, I've grown quite fond of vertically scrolling because it feels much more intuitive to scroll my thumb up and down rather than side to side. Of course there's a search bar and fast scroll bar, but since I don't have a lot of apps installed, I hardly ever use them. Oh, and if you want to quickly search for an app from the home screen, just long press on the app drawer icon. You also have the option to display your four most recently used apps, which I've disabled for aesthetic reasons. Next up, the quick settings have been slightly reduced in size, and there's now a do not disturb toggle, which takes the place of interruption, but we'll get into that a little later. So you may notice this wrench icon next to the settings cog and that can be activated or deactivated by pressing and holding on the settings icon for a few seconds. This wrench indicates that you have enabled the system UI tuner, which is an experimental feature in Marshmallow that may have bugs. This feature is pretty cool if you want to edit which quick toggles appear or what icons show up in the status bar. Say I have an alarm set, but I don't want the icon to show up because it makes the status bar look more cluttered, I can now do that. It's a great feature to have for those minimalists. Moving on, we also finally have an embedded battery percentage inside the settings that will show up inside the battery icon. This feature has been a long time coming and pretty much every other OEM and custom ROM maker has this, so it's nice to see Google finally get it together and include this option. Lastly, there's a demo mode, which is nice for those who take screenshots for their Google Play apps or want to show off their home screen setup and want the status bar to look clean. Now settings has received quite a few changes to it. Firstly, interruptions is now called do not disturb and we now have a slightly altered UI here if I remember correctly. It pretty much serves the same purpose of allowing you to set different rules for notifications based on time or event. You can of course choose the rule name, days this rule will take place, start and end times, and the do not disturb mode your phone will be in during this period. It's not vastly different than before, but it's still pretty handy. The app section has been largely altered. Inside apps, we now have a list of all apps installed with an option to include all system apps as well. Clicking on a specific app will take us to a separate screen to display information about that app, including the permissions we grant that app, its notifications mode, and battery percentage used. If you don't want an app to have access to your contacts, you can just disable it. How about location? Same thing. This feature puts the control over what an app has access to into the hands of the user, which is a great thing. Also, as mentioned, you can choose the notification urgency of an app, which was something Google left to developers to decide for themselves last year with Lollipop, only to find developers took advantage of this and made pretty much all app notifications high priority, which meant getting a heads up notification for everything an app wanted to notify you about. This year, they've learned from their mistake and are giving users the option to set what apps have what level of priority for their notifications, which is awesome. This gives you the choice of whether a certain app's notifications can pop up over other apps toward the notification bar or not. Now, for app permissions, there is another way to more efficiently handle them if you have a ton of apps installed. Simply tap the cog icon in the top right of the apps, then choose app permissions. Here you can see all permissions an app may request access to and enable or disable an app's permissions based on the permissions list. This provides a nice way to see what an app may want access to and easily manage whether you grant the app access or not. Heading back out, there's also app links, which will basically allow you to have an app open a specific link within the app rather than the browser. It's another useful feature for users that gives them even more control over how an app behaves with URL. There's also an option to configure default apps for certain situations, decide which apps can appear and cover the screen over other apps, which apps can modify your system settings, and manage which apps will optimize battery usage. Next up, the storage and USB section. Now the storage and USB section has been redesigned and looks less colorful, but now provides an option to view your files with the built-in file manager, but I'd still recommend something like Cabinet if you want a more robust file explorer. 
The next new area is memory, which looks quite different but does the same thing. It informs you of your app's memory usage. You have an option to see stats for various time intervals, which is an addition over previous memory settings. Lastly, Google has been pulled out of the Accounts tab and the Google Settings app and has found a new home right inside the Settings page. While everything is still the same feature-wise, this seems to be a much better place for it. Some last mentions are Google Now on Tap, which allows you to long press on the home screen for quick access to information that appears on screen. Now it's contextually aware of what's on the screen and will scan for keywords to search for things without the user ever having to leave the app. And if it does require the user to leave the app to find more information, it'll do it for you at the press of a button. It's basically Google Now on steroids. While I honestly haven't used this feature other than to test it, I can definitely see the use cases for it. And finally, perhaps the moment everyone has been waiting for battery life. How is battery life on Android 6.0 and how does Doze perform? Well, I have to be honest, I was very skeptical of my battery improving, but I couldn't be happier to be wrong. I've noticed my screen on time about double from just over 2 hours to just over 4 hours and even almost 5 at some times. It has been remarkably better. Now Doze isn't something I'm able to use extensively since I leave my phone charging overnight, but I have noticed that when I get Doze to work, the battery dips maybe 1-2% to over the course of 3 or 4 hours on standby, which is drastically better than Lollipop. I was actually able to stream the democratic debate through the CNN app from its start at 5.30pm Pacific Standard Time to about 7.30pm Pacific standard time, going from 95% when I started streaming to about 51% when I stopped and flipped on the TV for the rest of the debate. I am finally very happy with battery life on my Nexus 6 now and I hope that the Nexus 6P has battery life just like this. So overall, Android 6.0 Lollipop is basically an update that puts more control into the user's hands and improves battery life along the way while adding a few new features. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe down there for more videos from me, including my Nexus 6P coverage coming later next month. Let me know what you think about Android 6.0 Lollipop, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.